Item number four, wall graphic request. Big Shark Wall Graphic, DEV 2013-013. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, Dennis Mrozek, planner with the City of Daytona Beach. Uh, the first item tonight is a request uh, by Timothy Pace, owner of the Daytona Shells and Curios, for approval to replace and expand the existing wall graphic uh, with a new design on the building located at 2715 North Atlantic Avenue. Uh, again, the existing site is located on A1A at the northern end of the city. If I can get the, uh, the graphic up on this one. Thank you. On the northern end of the city, uh, uh, right up against A1A there. Uh, the request is to modify the existing wall graphic. Uh, wall graphics uh, are wall decoration that depicts a scene, picture, illustration, or design uh, with no written message, uh, word, insignia, arrow, or logo. Uh, requirements for the wall graphic include uh, that the building must meet the minimum standards, uh, that the uh, wall graphics applied are applied to a uh, prepared surface, uh, that they uh, provide an enhancement to the building, uh, that there are no written messages or logos, uh, and that the completed graphic complies with the uh, approved application. Um, so essentially, it's uh, what you see is, is what you're going to get. Uh, I've got a couple pictures of the current wall graphic that's, uh, that's on the walls. Uh, you see the, uh, the 3D shark um, sharks that are associated with this. These are embellishments. Uh, these will not be, uh, be taken down. Uh, the artist uh, has has worked a plan to be able to incorporate the sharks into the new design. Uh, these were approved uh, back in 2003. I just wanted to show you a couple of the areas. The, uh, um, these photos show the, uh, the existing blank walls on the north and south side of the building. Uh, the new uh, wall murals will be expanded uh, into this area also. As far as the uh, uh, the new wall graphic. Uh, the artist, uh, Perigo, has incorporated uh, the existing sharks into the graphics. Kind of show you how this works. This is, uh, and this is all included in your staff reports, but um, this is the full, uh, full wall graphic running across the top of the screen. And what I did was I pulled down uh, just three sections over here to kind of give you a better idea of, and make it a little bit clearer for you to see. Uh, you see a little bit more uh, detail involved uh, definitely uh, brighter colors, uh, more of an underwater scene. And the way he's going to be incorporating the sharks, uh, this is one of the 3D graphics, uh, one of the sharks, and it looks like it's going to be coming out of the, out of the surf and in, uh, into the sky. So uh, this is the center portion. This is the center that's going to be facing uh, A1A. Uh, you see the existing shark is shadowed out over here, uh, again with the, uh, the, the sea life included in the graphic. And on the north side of the building, uh, again, you see the shark where it's going to be located coming out of the, uh, the surf, and then the, uh, the details of the underwater creatures. Uh, as far as the recommendation, staff does recommend approval to replace and expand the existing wall graphic design with a new design on the building located at 2715 North Atlantic Avenue. Uh, a majority <laughs> vote of the planning board members President voting is required for approval for this item. And that concludes staff's presentation. Any questions for, from staff? Could we hear from the applicant? Hi. I'm Tim Pace. Um, we've um, run this business for uh, since 1960. So uh, what questions do you have? No, I was actually going to state your address. 2715 North Atlantic Avenue. Any questions for the applicant? No. I don't have any questions at all. I've seen the artist work and uh, he does very good work. I'll soon be planning on giving that up there. <laughs> well, we'll start as soon as possible. He's ready to go you know, as soon as we get it approved, hopefully. Member of the public that would like to speak for or against? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pace. Thanks. Board? 
Make a motion we approve Wall Graphics Request Development 2013-013 Big Shark 2715 North Atlantic Avenue. Second. Second. All those in favor, we have a motion and a second. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. Item number six, Madam Secretary. Aye. Or five. Item number five. Five. <coughs> Small scale comprehensive plan amendment, West Street. DEV 2013-014. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Remark and board members. Tom White, now our planning department. This is a request by Mr. Pete Zahn of Zahn Engineering on behalf of Alex Spano and Robinson Leal to approve a small-scale comp plan amendment changing the future land use map designation from level two residential to retail. Uh, the combined property is less than an acre. It's point seven, eight acres. The property is located at the rear of what you know as Spanos Imports at 520 ISB, also the rear of 112 Charles Street, recently purchased by Mr. Spanos, and the full lot of 531, 535 West Street owned by Mr. Leal. Um, this, is, uh, this is the block that fronts ISB, the front half, the majority of it, Spanos imports the back half. It's not one lot, it spans three different lots. Um, there's an aerial of it. Um, so these are the three photos represented in the application. Um, to some degree, this is considered a, a administrative cleanup item, but since these properties are located across the street from homes, we wanted to raise the awareness to the residents as well as the board members so you could have a chance to look at it. Um, it is a small area. Um, Mr. Spanos is interested in combining a small parcel he recently acquired with his larger abutting parcel that you know as Spanos Imports. The newly acquired lot is split between two future land use map designations. Um, this is the current land use color coding right here. The front half is red for retail and the back is yellow for level two residential. Again, that <coughs> darker outline outlines the three parcels that are subject to this amendment. So of the middle one, that's what Spanos Imports already occupies with a large old bakery that he refurbished into an auto sales and service area. A very small, almost sliver of a parcel is to the right. Um, and then to the left, the large square one has two houses, and that one's owned by Mr. Robinson Leal. Um, and Pete Zahn's representing both clients tonight. While, while we uh, researched the land use split of just the small area that the applicant came in with, we noticed that Spano's imports had this same split in land use, and we you wanted this to be an opportunity where we corrected that. In doing so, we didn't want to leave that last parcel out of the proposal, so we approached uh, Mr. Leal and we explained that his zoning is already um, BA and the land use is kind of la lagging behind it with R2 level 2 residential and he was interested in, in correcting it at this time along with the Spanos application. Um, a proposed rezoning is not associated with this amendment um, since uh, Spanos already has an industrial zoning district and the Leal's property as I mentioned is already zoned BA. Um, in fact, the Leal's zoning of BA is not an allowed zoning category within a level two future land use map designation, so approval of this land use amendment to retail would actually make the land use and zoning compatible. Um, Mr. Leal also owns two of the four houses across the street, across the West Street, from this um, application. Um, after we got into it, we learned that. Um, this is how the zoning looks, so the large purple areas industrial and the red is, um, re is BA. Um, objectives of the comp plan relevant to this application are as follows. Through the rezoning and plan review process, the city shall protect residential neighborhoods from the encroachment of incompatible uses. Um, since our single family homes directly across the street, staff responded to the owner's agent that amendment would be necessary to amend the land use map. Uh, Spanos Motors um, plans to continue to use their main lot as they presently are. 
um, the new small lot that they purchased they plan to use for car detailing um, there's a, an existing building they'll use for that and vehicular storage um, on the outside any site plan that it's going to be required would come to the TRT and also to the uh, Midtown Redevelopment Board. Um, the, the neighborhood policy, uh, the, the neighborhood that this is located in, um, which is H, does not include any policies relevant to the subject uh, application. Um, there is a Midtown Master Plan that's uh, been approved, and um, the Midtown Redevelopment Board looked at that at their last meeting and unanimously approved. Um, recommending approval of this amendment. The TRT has reviewed the uh, comp plan amendment and has no objections. Um, that that concludes my presentation. If you have questions, um, we have Pete's on here as well as his two clients, and Charles Bryant may be here from the redevelopment um, division as the project manager. Uh, so we'll take questions. Just a question on the staff report on the neighborhood input, page seven. You mentioned that uh, a neighborhood meeting was held or not held, and if it was, the applicant would present. Uh, notes tonight yes and as you know uh, a neighborhood meeting is not, requ it's not required. required but we have been advising applicants to <coughs> hold meetings um, this is a pretty small area and I, I similarly suggested to the applicant that they have a meeting um, I don't know that they've had one yet or if they were going to use an alternate way of doing it through phone calls um, but we could have them address that <coughs> Pete Zahn, Zahn Engineering, 244 South Palmetto, Daytona. Um, as it turns out, there, Mr. Leal owns two of the parcels across the street. Mr. Spanos owns one parcel across the street. The balance is um, the electric company. There was one lot in the middle that we have not spoken to but the rest of them are involved in the application. Okay, thank you. <coughs> motion we approve small scale comprehensive plan amendment DEV 2013-14 West Street. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Zoning, planned commercial development, 530 Mason Avenue, DEV, 2012-128, quasi-judicial hearing. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, the next item uh, up tonight is a request to rezone 0 0.675 acre of land located at 530 Mason Avenue and an adjacent property to the north of 530 Mason Avenue from BA Business Automotive to R1A1 single family residential or and R1A1 single family residential to plan commercial development uh, for the purpose of upgrading and renovating the existing building and site and to allow for uses consistent with BA zoning. The, uh, the property is located at uh, 530 uh, Mason Avenue. Uh, it is at the northwest corner of Mason and Thomason. Here's an aerial for you showing the uh, the two properties with the um, uh, the uh, residential property behind uh, the BA zoning. As a matter of fact, I'll pull that up in a second. This is the uh, future land use designation of retail. It uh, goes uh, well past or, or just past the subject property. And the uh, current zoning, uh, you see the BA 
located on the front part of the property, and then the R1A1 located on the uh, back part of the property. Uh, the proposed zoning would be planned commercial development and would encompass both, both of the lots. I wanted to show you a uh, current picture of the existing vacant building. Uh, this is uh, this is frontage along Mason Avenue. And a couple of things I wanted to point out is as far as what they're proposing on this uh, on this picture that you might be able to get a better idea of. The um, one of the things that they're going to be doing. You see this chain fence uh, located on the front of the property. That's going to be uh, going to be taken down. Uh, landscape islands uh, buffering along Mason Avenue are going to be installed uh, on both sides of the drive aisle. Uh, also on this, you can see the. Um, the pole sign back over here, and the pole sign is going to be taken down. It's going to be replaced with a monument sign. Now this is the uh, the rear property. This is the adjacent uh, property to the back of it, uh, currently zoned R1A1 single family. Uh, over here, you see a chain link fence that runs the length of the property. Uh, that's going to be uh, replaced by a concrete block wall, uh, and it's also include an entrance uh, for employees and uh, delivery access. Uh, as far as 530 Mason, again, two lots, the front lot BA, the rear lot is R1A1, a uh, total of uh, 0.675 acre. Uh, the future land use map designation, again, is retail. Uh, the building is currently vacant, uh, and it is uh, approximately 2,253 square feet in size. As far as the proposed rezoning, um, it, the proposal calls for... Uh, calls for uh, uh, some BA type uses. Uh, the full uh, uses being requested can be found in attachment A of your, <clears throat> excuse me, in attachment A of your staff report. Uh, it also calls for the removal of the chain link and the chain fencing around the property, uh, replacing the existing pole sign with the monument sign, installing the landscape buffers, improve the parking area uh, surface in the front um, for, uh, for better continuity and better safety. Uh, and also installing a concrete wall adjacent to the residential property and, and also fronting on Thomason Avenue. I do have a, uh, a, uh, a landscape plan that I wanted to bring up for you, kind of give you a, yeah. uh, an idea of where some of these things are going to be located and what some of the proposals are. Uh, this is Mason along the bottom. You've got Thomason that runs along the, uh, the right-hand side. Uh, the building is located right over here, and it is just inside the BA zoning line. Um, we've had to verify that with the county. The line was actually moved on our maps. We've had the county update that, and, and the actual uh, 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 BA zoning line is on the, uh, the north side of that, uh, that building. Uh, over here, you can see some of the landscape buffers that they're putting in with the, uh, the ends for the uh, parking stalls, uh, additional landscaping on the interior of the, uh, the parking area. Uh, along the side adjacent to the other uses, you find the landscaping some landscaping back uh, this way, and then along the back wall there's additional landscaping in addition to Thomason. Uh, along the back wall uh, adjacent to this is the residential use. Uh, there is a requirement for a 10-foot landscape buffer. Uh, one of their waiver requests is to reduce that to 5 feet, uh, but in addition to the 5-foot uh, the reduction, instead of the 6-foot wall that's required, they're going to be putting in an 8-foot wall uh, to compensate for the 5-foot for the reduction. Uh, this, uh, there's a pad that's located over here in the back of the building. Uh, one of the things that they were looking for a waiver for as far as uses was to uh, permit uh, outside service of cars. Uh, that be allowed to take place in this particular area over here, an area that's screened uh, from Mason Avenue and from Thomason Avenue. So you wouldn't be able to see the outside activity taking place. One other thing I wanted to note, uh, because of the, uh, the tightness of, this, of the building, uh, one of the things that they wanted to do is have extra storage so they don't have any storage outside uh, in, in the, uh, the back portion of this, of this site. So they did request uh, these portable storage containers. Uh, these are eight feet tall, and all of the storage for the tires or, or ever, other, other type of storage material would be done uh, and placed inside the, uh, the storage containers. There are three historic trees. Uh, on the site, uh, they've actually reworked the wall to be able to uh, protect one of the historic trees, uh, and they are uh, keeping this area free from any type of, of uh, material that may, uh, may damage the tree roots. Uh, again, uh, really quickly, uh, the waiver requests are listed in your, um, in your staff report, but uh, just to give you a couple, 
couple that we talked about. The outside storage, uh, or excuse me, the outside automotive service, uh, uh, there's a waiver to permit that. Uh, the storage containers, as I mentioned, the five-foot uh, landscape buffer, which the, the landscape buffer is going to be going on the outside of the wall, so it's going to be in the area facing uh, the residential property, so they'll be able to take advantage of that landscape buffer that's going to be there. The eight-foot eight concrete wall. Uh, also, architecture, um, they requested a, uh, to waive the architectural design standards for the building. Um, you see it's a uh, kind of a, a long, narrow building. Uh, they haven't done much to it other than paint it. Uh, and and uh, we have certain uh, design standards in the city, and they've elected to uh, request to waive meeting those certain design standards to uh, and, and hoping that uh, painting the building would would uh, suffice. Um, finally, one of the um, excuse me, one of the waivers that they've requested was the minimum size uh, for a PCD. Um, the minimum size to rezone to a PCD is one acre. Uh, this is 0.675 acres. You can request a, a reduction in that in that size for a uh, for a public benefit or for a uh, for a good cause. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out, uh, Mr. McGinnis reminded me, uh, one of the opportunities we had was to perhaps rezone that back parcel to BA uh, instead of rezoning the entire uh, the entire uh, two uh, two lots to PCD. Um, un unfortunately, with the BA zoning. There's a lot of uses that might not be compatible with that residential use. So uh, similar to what we did with the family dollar, if they were to rezone that as BA, we would also want them to do a land use change to be able to restrict some of those uses uh, that, the, uh, that the retail and the BA might, or might normally permit. Uh, uh, one of the ways that, uh, that they can also do that is to rezone to a PD, which would restrict those uses and they'd only have the one process to go through. So. Uh, that's what they elected to go through, and staff was fine with that, that that, that was their, their option. Uh, so as far as a recommendation, staff does recommend approval to rezone uh, 530 Mason Avenue and the adjacent property from BA and R1A1 <coughs> to plan commercial development. The item is tentatively scheduled to be heard by the City Commission on first reading on April 3rd, uh, 2013, and for second reading April 17, 2013. Uh, that is a public hearing. An affirmative vote of six shall be required to recommend approval to the City Commission. And that concludes staff's presentation. Any questions for staff? Yeah, oh. Go ahead. Uh, yes, could you tell me a little bit about the containers, the storage containers yes, they're, uh, they're talking about? What, well, what are the sizes, height, and you say they are blocked from view yeah, from the I can, street? I can let uh, the applicant speak a little bit more, but the height is uh, eight foot height. Um, and that's going to be right adjacent to the eight-foot wall. So the, the height of the container will be the height of the wall in the, in the back. Um, there's only five that are showing on there. That's probably the maximum they can put out. It's only the area out there that, that's shown on the site plan that they can, uh, they, they can place these, these containers. The containers typically are what you might find uh, on the back of, uh, of trucks um, and um, these steel storage containers. Uh, and they just set them down there, and, and they're very sturdy. Uh, they can lock them up and, and they can use them. They're going to be painted to match the colors of the building, uh, so they won't be a, uh, a different color back there. You won't have railroad cars back there. So, so that's the the wall where the neighbors are. Then. That's the wall in the, the back. In the back. wall where the neighbors are. As a matter of fact, and there's a five foot buffer still. There, yeah, there's the eight foot wall and then the five foot buffer. Correct. This is just a. Uh, factual clarification. The landscape architect design plans are usually required if the uh, yep. landscape area is greater than 3,000 square feet. Correct. Okay. Correct. And if this is being done in, in two, if it was done in two phases of less than, less than 3,000 square feet, we could justify it underneath uh, uh, as a variance. But uh, my question is, on the first page of the attachment, there's a, an indication there that the landscape area is 9,300 square feet. Which attachment are you on, A, B, or C? Uh, attachment B, first, first page. So I, I, maybe it's my misunderstanding of what landscape area means when it appears on this cover sheet. This potential landscape area? Okay. Yeah, and you know, I did see 9,300 9, square feet, and you were talking about over 3,000 square feet? Right. 
Yeah, you know, but, listen, I'm perfectly happy with the landscaping plan the way it's presented. Right. But it was just a matter of uh, for clarification. If we if we're doing the variance, do we have to be concerned with the three thousand or six thousand? No, I, I think it's more of a concern that anything that's over three thousand is what's going to require the variance, uh, whether it's going to be oh, okay. thirty-five hundred or nine thousand. Uh, okay. There's the variance, and I, and I will point out. It, it, the way this started out, it was just going to be the, the BA portion that was going to be developed. Uh, the applicant came through and he did the landscape plan for the for the lower portion, and that 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 was in an area where it may have complied with that three thousand, so he'd be able to do it. As he expanded it and, and expanded into the back, he kind of put that together. So he had two separate plans over here that were working, and by the time he added them all up, he was over his his three thousand and. And uh, he's he's got a plan over here that that uh, typically would require a Florida landscape architect to complete. But but I, I thought uh, you know after staff reviewed it that he did a pretty good job of, of making all of those numbers work. Oh, no, so. let's, landscape uh, design plan looks good to me. I mean, it, and it can be prepared by an engineer in those cases where it's less than three. Yes, thousand. exactly, exactly. Yeah, and one question. Uh, I think it's going to be real nice having that vegetation out front. Now, is there anything we can do to break up that front of that building a little bit? It's really not very. It's it's really very plain. That's uh, that's a that's a great uh, question for the applicant. <laughs> I believe. Um, I would like you know if if we can have have the applicant do something to the front of that building, yeah, you something. know, and, and maybe bring it closer to the standards. Of our uh, of our uh, land development code, that would yeah, be yeah. Because I don't think see, they want to put vegetation there, but just yeah. something to break the front of that building would be very well. Well, helpful. perhaps so uh, we uh, Mr. Finley can address that. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, wait, just, just hmm? hold that thought. That was my concern also. To excuse me, because of the building is what it is, just to paint it and give the variance to agree to a variance to just paint it. I have an issue with that. We got, we've got to do something, especially with Mason Avenue being a main thoroughfare. Okay. Um, I have just a couple of questions. Um, if the applicant, this building's been ending how long? Uh, over six months. Okay, so just to reopen this for anything, they would have had to do a site plan, correct? Correct. They would have had to do landscaping Correct. Bring it up. They would have had to do an irrigation system. Correct. Okay. Uh, Article 18 would have come into play with the back, so they would have had to do a wall. A uh, compatibility. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. They would have had to do landscaping. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Just I think question. the landscaping that they're doing, the chain links coming out, the block wall going in. All of this is a huge improvement yes, to the side. I had a question uh, on page seven. The uh, it's about the traffic uh, coming in and out, ingress and egress, uh, coming in and out uh, uh, of that particular location. I know a traffic uh, traffic reviewer found it acceptable, but personally, going in and out of a lot of businesses over there, there's a lot of traffic, create a lot of hazard and so forth, and that. Uh, is there going to be another traffic study done or something? Or well, uh, is it a for this particular project, a, a, a traffic impact analysis mm -hmm. isn't required. Okay. Uh, just because of the types of uses that, that are permitted there and what they're rezoning to, it doesn't trip a, uh, a threshold for them to, to, to do an extended type of a traffic impact analysis. So uh, they, they present their traffic plan. Our traffic reviewer looks at it. Um, takes it into account that uh, what the uh, the current and the past conditions were and what the use is going to be, and then they uh, they make their decision if they if they have any issues or concerns with those. There's actually been no changes, is there? In, in well, the rest, in the uh, no changes. They are actually. I think the greatest change you see is uh, um, this was a car lot before, and and uh, they were able to pack a whole bot, a whole bunch more cars out there. So you get maybe a lot more cars coming and going off of the lot. Uh, where in this case you, you, you really have more of a, a service um, um, use and, and the cars traveling to and from to the actual service use. So. Was Mr. Wittenauer uh, able to offer anything as far as embellishments to the, the building that might uh, suffice? Um, I looked at the architectural design guidelines relative to this 
building. It's um, it's less than 30 feet wide, so it's long and narrow. It's 90 feet long. So um, if a project like this came in new, all I would be able to say is um, you're going to have to have two breaks within that 90 foot span that have three foot offset in the wall and the roof line. It looks like he's got enough glass to meet our minimum 15%. Um, and he's got glass or doors every 30 feet, which is the other standard. So um, he, he just happens to have a, a narrow building that doesn't trigger a lot of, of uh, extra requirements of what you see here. And part of that is our standards, um, they're fairly minimal, but they do make a difference. Um, you have to kind of tailor your guidelines to what's going to be acceptable to the development community. So. Um, Something could be done to, um, you know, they might add a front waiting room or a small uh, sort of air lock <coughs> so you, you go through a door before you go into the sales office. That might keep the air conditioning in. Um, but there's, there's ways they can add something to it. I didn't want to try to design in or, or do anything like that. It's, if they propose something, I'll review it. But, um, um, with an awning? Any kind of awning? Because there are several in the in the, on other businesses around there that break up long arrow, there's several strip shopping centers. Mm -hmm. this, was there any discussion about awnings or awnings? Do you need the idea of at least of breaking up the front of the building? Um, there was no discussion like that, but if you, you know, saw some old pictures of this, e even the paint and, and the new windows have made a, a huge improvement. Um, but if, if the applicant wants to propose changes you know you you could <coughs> review and discuss now or they could turn something into us to review um, but so far we really haven't sat down to say what could we do to improve the building I wonder could we use potted plants there I'm sorry oh I wonder could we use large potted plants just occasionally along there to break that um, because I don't think they want to break in the concrete because the concrete runs right up to the building, I believe. And, and I, I, so I don't want that to be done. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. but, but you can use large potted plants and that does break things up, it, it, small trees. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if they would consider that just, just to break the front of the building a little bit. Anyway. You can also even fix to a building architectural details uh -huh. that don't have to be mounted in the concrete. Okay, anyway, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, don't, I understand what you're talking about, breaking up the front of the building, but we're actually enhancing the whole site by everything that they're doing, and I'd hate to put any restrictive uh, qualifications to where they're spending, you know, it's a businessman going in there and, and spending money to get it going and making it look presentable where it, like I said, anything's an improvement to what's there, especially with the walls putting the stuff behind the thing. And I don't want to add a lot of cost to a guy trying to improve the property. This is a pretty large capital investment for a 2,200 square foot building. Right. I mean, the, it, at some point, there's some dollars and cents here um, that has to certainly be looked at. I just feel with the variances that we're looking at that uh, there's something that can be done to improve that, to enhance that. It's come a long way, but again, with that being on the main thoroughfare, I just, I would like to see a little more done to that building than the way it is right at this point today. And they, just as a capital investment, just a follow-up, they are seeking a rezoning of the back, which right now is useless. Correct. For anything, just so we'll actually be adding to the value of the value of the business, they'll be getting, um, they'll be getting something out of that, so just something to keep in mind. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. I have one other comment. Yeah, okay. Because actually, once all the enhanced landscaping is in in the front, because there's a terrific amount of landscaping going across the front of the project, and on, this, and on both sides actually, I think the building will not look as stark as it looks now. Once the, the, little, the little landscape islands are put in, all the landscaping on the front and on the side, I think we won't have the stark look in the building. Uh, because otherwise, I would agree, something should be done, even if some, some plants. Uh, 
Uh, but I think given the whole picture and what the completed project is going to look like, uh, I think it takes away from the starkness that's there now. I tend to agree with the plants also. It's something that just breaks that up and it's not a major expense for that either. My name is Jerry Finley, Finley Engineering Group, 5531 South Ridgewood, Port Orange, and I represent John Snebley, the owner of the property. Um, Dennis showed you uh, a lot of the facets of, of what we've got. If I could have the, uh, the file that's marked historic that I gave you. Um, Dennis showed you the, the zoning map and showed, showed you on the zoning map how the BA on both on the east side and the west side of the property extended way up to the north past uh, uh, where the existing BA is on this property and in fact even farther than, than this property uh, goes. Um, and so it's kind of a natural that that would be squared off in some way, whether it's by PD or, or BA. And we had originally submitted the uh, application as a rezoning for just the back to, to BA. And um, there were certain concerns that staff expressed that uh, uh, there were some uses um, that were undesirable in the BA. And, uh, and that's where we got into the, um, uh, the early on we had gotten into the landscape plans uh, done in pieces. And, um, this uh, shows you uh, historically, go to the top if you would. Um, this, this work was done, these photos were done by the Google um, when they were driving through the community and for their Google Maps project. And it shows uh, uh, the use uh, back a, a few years ago, a uh, tire store, uh, a white building trimmed in red. Um, all the things that you probably d didn't want there or don't want there. Um, uh, you had uh, in the front corner at, at the intersection, you've got tires that are just uh, a display of, of tires, uh, some, something undesirable. No landscaping at all in the front there. Uh, you even see, you can scroll down a little bit and, and you'll see the uh, uh, cars being worked on in the front yard or in the front uh, of the building. Uh, there's one jacked up there right in front of the building now that's, that's being worked on. Uh, over on this, you can go uh, down a little bit farther and um, um, even a little bit farther. There's the tires that are displayed in the front and, uh, and you can see a boat stored uh, in the front yard uh, of the facility. Um, Go on all the way down. That's the Thomas inside of it. You see the, the car jacked up uh, being worked on in the front. And then the last uh, photo shows what was happening. Uh, their, their use had extended into the uh, residential zoning. Wasn't well, supposed to be, but it was, it was happening at that time. So it's all the bad things that you didn't, you know, you don't want. And that's what we're, we're trying to clean that up uh, here right now. Um, If you would go to the one, the, the first photos, we'll take photos one, two, three in, in that order. Uh, the, the first photo that I've got shows the, uh, the property uh, to the, immediately to the east. Uh, once again, kind of a automotive type area, not the best looking either. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully our project will be a catalyst to um, promote some, some other things happening. The next photo shows the property across the street on the south side of, of Mason. And once again, no landscaping, cars parked up to the, to the street. You see them, you see no landscaping. And then the last photo that I brought is the, the, the uh, residential property that is immediately north of us. Uh, they've been there quite a while and um, they set their house quite a ways off of, of that uh, ugly use. And looks like they've buffered themselves, uh, hunkered down to, 
to uh, so that they didn't have to look at um, the ugliness that was happening on on the on the neighboring site. Um, the uh, landscape plan that, that I brought showed shows the uh, um, all the green that we're trying to to put in the eight foot wall along the back the uh, landscaping out, outside of the wall so that uh, uh, you don't just see a stark masonry wall in the back. Um, we have 20-some-odd um, um, trees, I think it was, that we're putting in, continuous shrubbery around the entire site, uh, cutting out a lot of pavement, putting in curbs to protect the islands, uh, just a a lot of landscaping and, and irrigation. Actually, it's 38 trees I counted. Um, so we're doing a lot. Um, a lot of dollars have, have, are being spent here. In fact, the the applicant almost pulled the plug twice. It just uh, between going from rezoning a one one piece of property to BA to the to the. PCD zoning and the additional fee and all the all the work that was involved, um, it 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 almost didn't happen. So we're um, I'm hoping that uh, we can get approval and we can we can get things moving. Um, we elected not to have a neighborhood meeting. We sent out 44 notices to registered mail to the neighbors within 500 feet. We've got most of those uh, cards back. Um, I don't know if any of the people out here are, uh, <laughs> are neighbors of, of um, this property, but but you don't see a, a, a great outpouring of, of citizens uh, for for this. So, um, <clears throat> if anything, I think it's an enhancement, and they'd be they should be happy that uh, um, we don't have the ugliness to or won't have the ugliness uh, to look at anymore. Um, it seemed like architectural treatment was is is still kind of an issue, and um, uh, I'd be happy to to work with the owner and see what we can do. I um, I can't make any real promises other than maybe we can do some some different painting, uh, banding, accents around the windows, around the doors, um, maybe some shutters. Uh, Something yep. to, to something that's fairly inexpensive that we can break up the monotony a little yeah, bit can more for you. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do my best to, to do that, and we'll work with the staff on on that to see if we can do something that that doesn't isn't too painful, but but let looks decent for you. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any members of the public? <laughs> Mr. Public's not here. Um, I do have just two last questions for staff as myself. The wall, you said it drops, I'm sorry, I don't mean anything. In the back, it drops down to six feet. That's not in any one of the front of any one of those five containers. That's just no, that's the far corner where the trees are. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. And I believe. Um, in fact, Mr. Finley just made me think of it. Uh, in here, there is no outside little tire Michelin men stacks that they can turn into Christmas trees or anything else that's allowed outside. Of uh, I, I think that'd be outside storage, and if you can see it, they can't. They can put it in the back. Right. But okay. I, I, I thought that was specifically prohibited. Right. That. right. I just in, wanted in the agreement. And, okay. Yes. Make a motion we approve rezoning plan commercial development development 2012 128 530 Mason Avenue PCD. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And thank you for hearing the concerns about the recommendation. Okay. Move on to other business. The Downtown Blue Road Redevelopment Board met twice in the month of February, I'm January, 
We had our regular monthly meeting on the 5th, but there was an additional meeting that was held on January 28th for further discussion and clarification on the conditional use and outdoor seating for the filling station at the corner, okay, corners of Palmetto and Orange. Uh, we discussed it, we hashed it, we brought out everything we thought was absolutely possible so that we could vote on it uh, at the next meeting. The regular monthly meeting held February 5th at 12 noon here in the commission chambers. That was our big item and it was approved. Uh, in that meeting we also received a code enforcement report. We received a list of redevelopment improvements which included uh, and not limited to the parking lot lighting uh, or on Beach Street, repainting of the arches and street directories, a replacement of trash receptacles, replacement of arch up lights. There, uh, there's a plan to install palm tree grates, uh, upgrade the electrical supply <coughs> at City Island. They say the electrical supply is not sufficient for the individuals that are there for farmers market. So they're working on that. We also uh, received a list of project updates. And with that, we received a copy of the adopted CRA budget with a comparison of last year, 2012, to the budget for 2013. Uh, and at that time, we received a copy of the budget for capital funds. Midtown board meeting was held on February 12th at 6 p.m. in the city commissioner's chambers. Reverend Robertson from Mount Carmel was asked to do the invocation, but he was late, but he did get a chance to speak. A report was given by court enforcement. Uh, there was two items for discussion, <coughs> and they were discussed. One of them was the um, Stano, Stano, uh, Stano. Center, okay. and about a duplex being placed on Fulton Street, and it was a long discussion, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had a meeting, a meeting was held on the 26th at 6 p.m. to 8 at the Dickinson Center about Orange Avenue improvement, the public meeting, and the public did turn out. Questions was asked and they were answered. Now, how pleased they were, I can't tell you. But he did the best he could. And they did ask a lot of questions. And other than that, besides um, the board having a lot of questions they asked, too. I don't know why they ever even answered. But anyway, <laughs> everything went well. The meeting was in jail. Mr. Bowman. We met. Uh, February the 8th, right, Yeah, <laughs> And uh, uh, discussed, basically we approved two conditional use requests. One was a, uh, uh, for the uh, Tower Bar and Grill to have a uh, outdoor beverage and, and food uh, service. And that was uh, voted through unanimously. And uh, then the other one was for the old Main Street Cafe uh, that the new owner is going to uh, permit to allow him to uh, serve alcoholic beverages along with uh, uh, food, uh, bringing that restaurant back in. And uh, I think he mentioned that possibly doing breakfast as well, maybe in the, in the near future, but it wasn't concrete. So that was approved as well. Um, and that's pretty much all the issues we were discussed. Except for, and there's, there's new you know, uh, board members. I know Kerry Register is now on the redevelopment board. And then the, I can't think of his name, the guy that owns Turner. Um, that sounds about right. Randy? Or that. Randy? Yeah. So, you're right. Public? Public I'm worried about John Nicholson's health. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, we ought to send somebody out. It was a Dickinson Center. It was. He gets around. Comments from staff? Two things. One, on March 20th at the 
city commission prior to the city commission meeting they're going to have a workshop on the land development code module three uh, the draft that we received from clarion we're presenting to the commission um, it's just a workshop setting but craig richardson will be here to discuss that with them after direction from there we're recommending that project move forward um, subject to comments what we receive but that's uh, a meeting i encourage you to attend if, if you can to listen um, see uh, what the city commission has to say about where we are with the status uh, the, the second item you should have in your folder a survey that is put out by the SB coalition they're they're looking for broad uh, input and ideas on people that use ISB corridor and uh, your thoughts uh, for their future planning um, if it's easiest to do that online through the link if you don't have that we have a hard copy and if you want to fill that out and give it to us we could turn it in uh, if you uh, could forward that link on to anyone else they're looking for as much input of users of uh, ISB corridor as possible and um, it just went out, and I'm sure you're going to give sufficient time for that, but I encourage everyone on the board uh, to fill that out and submit your comments. That's all I have. The meeting on March 20th, what time is it? It's going to be 4 to at least 5. It'll be before the regular city commission at 6, so they'll take a break before the 6. When is Module 3 going to be available for us? Depending on what the city commission says right away after that, I assume. It's a Monday, right? Wednesday. Wednesday. The regular city, city commission, commission meeting. meeting. It's at uh, four before their meeting. Mm -hmm. Whenever it is available, a little more than like two weeks to read it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of time. Well, they present, are they presenting module three is done? Is that what they're presenting to the commission? <laughs> Craig Richardson uh, will be here to discuss it in the short time we have. I'm sure we're not going to get into a whole lot of the details, although uh, staff reviewed it. Staff has identified some things that are in their contract that aren't in there. Um, we're suggesting that they continue to do those as to the advisory board and, and forward. Um, I think there's some input from the Commission strategic planning the other day that our process should try to be as more streamlined if possible um, So they're going to hear what is in there generally give some direction generally and then discuss the um, What's left to complete it and uh, that's a subject to if we want to change the scope Which I don't think we're necessarily proposing although um, having um, Clarion come for two days sessions where we have public meeting the second night that no one shows up probably some of the things we're going to look at tweaking in the process but certainly uh, getting back to the advisory board and getting uh, v card and others uh, reviewing that we're going to still suggest uh, testing uh, as needed uh, so this is really the first draft and, and start of the because we still have our planning board ldc committee yes and we would um suggest there's a lot of work before it even comes for a hearing before a vote here so uh, those steps would all be ahead of us yet. Comments from the board? You want to start with Mr. Barnum, anybody? Um, no comments. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can't make that meeting because uh, I have my annual teaching session, and this year it's in Jacksonville that week. So it's going to be an exciting week, but I'll be able to get back. And today was my day of retirement, so I'm joining a few of you. Uh, oh, I s sense. spent the entire day teaching and talking to children uh, and having a lot of fun. Uh, it was quite exciting. So I just want to let you know that I'm a little freer to do what I came here to do. <laughs> so well, I can be of better help. That's about it. I'd like to apologize for being late. And last month, I just forgot. But I still want to say, if you find anybody who would like to go sit on the Midtown board, please feel free. You <laughs> <laughs> need somebody to sit on the board. To, yeah, the Midtown board. As we come around this way, Mr. Davis. Good. Okay, Mr. Hussain, we are adjourned. It's there. 2013, they're going to be planning board meeting for order. Secretary, will you call roll? Certainly.
Mr. Hurt. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. McGinnis. Here. Mr. Bohan. Here. Ms. Remark. Here. Ms. Washington. Here. Mr. Watson. Here. Mr. Davis. Here. Ms. Benjamin. Mr. Neal. Mr. Bahu. Here. Uh, uh, moving on to the approval of last month's minutes. Why don't we take them separately? December 20th, 2012. Um, a motion to. Okay, I did call in just some grammatical corrections. Second. Okay. Second. Yes, we had a second. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? We're, we're good. January 24th, 2013. I also called in some changes to that and um, grammatical, and then just a little clearing up rows on page 14 under board comments. That exchange, she just went back to the tape to make sure that that was correct since that was a lot of back and forth. And so she made some changes in there. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Am I supposed to say motion in a second? Okay, we did say that. All right. Thank you. All those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay. Uh, before we go on to the new <coughs> items, we have an introduction that Mr. Walton would like to make for us. Yeah, I'd like to uh, introduce everyone and say hello to uh, Evan Futch. He's a uh, planning student. The University of Central Florida has a planning program. He's a Daytona resident, and they have a mentoring program. And we're looking forward to pursuing uh, working with him and having him uh, learn how planning really works where he gets out of school. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Futch. Does he know about the horse and the cars? <laughs> Okay, moving on to new items. 